Hello everyone, welcome to the stream. Apologies for being a little bit tardy today. I did stop for a minute to admire the beautiful sunset that there was outside. Uh, we're going to be playing, as you may have guessed from the, uh, the description of the stream and the background image I've drawn here, The Dark Crystal, uh, which is a, an adventure game created by Sierra in 1983 based on the 1982 film The Dark Crystal, which hopefully you'll be familiar with. Um, it's certainly one of my favourite films, um, a very, very fine piece of filmmaking, I think. Um, let's say hello to whoever's in chat. Hello, Alice Itra, if that's how I pronounce your name. Welcome. Um, if anybody would like to pop in and say hello, please do. It's always lovely to hear from people. So this is going to be um, a similar format to previous Adventure Game streams that we've done here. Um, I This is our backdrop. Um, any chat will appear on the right-hand side of the screen. Um, I've also prepared a... A digital drawing document for here you go uh, for map making if we need to do that because this is we're kicking it old school with this adventure game uh, this is the the uh, <laughs> early and ugly years of adventure games I mean they never got too tidy did they really but um, let me hide that up again uh, we may or may not need this because um, this is, so this is a bit backstory really, this is the seventh high res adventure game um, produced by Sierra, who are sort of morphing through different identities uh, throughout the period from 1980 to 1983, uh, during which all seven of these games were produced. So this is high res adventure number six, uh, which is a little confusing isn't it, if there are seven of them, but they did produce uh, numbers one and two and then zero. Uh, so that, that kind of explains that. And um, what they are is uh, inspired by Roberta Williams playing um, Adventure, uh, later known as Colossal Cave. Um, they're a step into an attempt at graphic adventure games in that they're text parser based, um, but each room has a, has a graphical element, um, which is not necessarily very well used. Um, but certainly adds a lot of atmosphere, I found. So previously on this channel, we have played Mystery House, the very first one they made, and does kind of claim to be the first graphical adventure game, although that may be debatable. Um, and then the very next game they made, same year, Wizard and the Princess, which was kind of the forerunner to the King's Quest series of adventure games. Um, so two really um, interesting and and part of the sort of uh, formative gestalt of um, of an early adventure games, especially in the graphical era. Um, so we've played those, and this is probably going to be in the same vein. Now I've got um, I've got the manual here printed out in front of me for ease of reference. Um, I I couldn't find a copy online of the original manual, uh, just for the Dark Crystal. So I've taken the pages from the Roberta Williams anthology um, a CD collection that I've got. Um, for this, so what what's interesting is it's is, um, it's not long by itself, but it's longer than the manuals for the previous adventures in this series that I've uh, played, uh, and principally that's because uh, there's quite a large section of backstory written in character by Augra, who I guess kind of in sense in uh, context, sorry. Uh, with the um, with the world of the film is kind of speaking to us as a computer player in the modern day, well, 1983 the modern day, um, and tells us the story uh, kind of of the past of the world, but also the sort of the present of the beginning of the story and what things will go on to happen. It's kind of a mixture of hints and backstory really but the the thing that really impressed me about this manual is that it's got the best set of instructions of the of the ones I've played so far I wish I'd had this set of instructions for the other two games um, and I am tempted to to read those three for you here so 
I will I will do that. But first of all, let's actually get this game up and running. So let me get my discs in the right order. So for Dark Crystal, we've got uh, two game discs and one uh, save game disc to shuffle between. So there'll be a little bit of disc swapping going on. I hope you'll um, you'll bear with me for that. So I'll get that up and running. We'll see some logos and things flash up. Apologies for the loud weeping. That's, that's what the Apple II does. In fact, that's, um, there we go, lovely logo rendering. So yeah, it'll ask me to change the disc over, so I'll just flip that round for us. Oh no, that's the wrong button. Press that button. Press this button. Here we go. There we go. So we'll just just straighten up the first screen, but I won't I won't dwell on that just yet. We'll come back to that in a minute. I want to say that yes, the Apple II, I think the only sounds we're gonna get at the Apple II as we regards this game are the occasional beep. Um, either when we do something it does like or when we do something it doesn't like. Um, these are these are the things we have to deal with. Um, so what I've done and dropped in the background is I've quickly cobbled together sort of an ambient track, um, vaguely inspired by the film soundtrack. It'd be lovely to use the film soundtrack. I, I can't afford to license that, unfortunately. Um, yeah, I, um, I as I briefly alluded to, I do really like the film, um, and and yeah, it just struck me because I rewatched it the other day. Um, it's a good excuse to rewatch it again in advance of this stream. Um, I really enjoyed the um, the soundtrack by Trevor Jones. It's um, really interesting orchestral score, but with um, some kind of traditional instruments and some synthesizers mixed in there. Um, let me know how the uh, the background music is. This is probably the loudest part of the background music I made. Um, so apologies if it's cutting uh, cutting into me a little bit. I'll pop it down a little bit there. The levels look a little bit high. Um, let me know how that sounds for you. Um, it's mostly quite quiet, but there is one bit where it gets a bit loud and spooky, which I thought was appropriate, but uh, not helpful if it's drowning me out. So uh, with this sort of on screen here, um, let me read you a little bit of these instructions, because I think they give a good idea of what we're going to be playing. And if you haven't seen one of these adventure games before, of this type of adventure game, um, I think it will give you a good grounding. Um, and probably a good refresher for me as to what I'll be facing. So, commanding your computer to section. Your computer serves as your hands and feet, eyes and ears during your adventure. It has a large vocabulary, that might be questionable, uh, but only understands phrases of one or two words. In many cases, these will consist of a verb followed by a noun, such as drink potion, climb tree or cut vine. All commands are followed by pressing return. Very useful information. Different directions uh, take a single letter, N for north, S for south, E for east, west for W for west, sorry, U for up and D for down. Sometimes your computer companion will want more information. If you wish to enter a door, command go door. Um, so those are all really useful things to to, um, to hint at really, that there are specific kind of verbs that are preferable to others. So you'll pop the old, uh, background music a little bit there. there we go. Um, at times you will meet other creatures, some evil, some good, who may have important messages or clues. Speak with them if you believe they can be helpful. If you meet a guard, for instance, command talk guard or listen guard. Watch for objects along the way. Many have mystical qualities and you'll need them to survive or accomplish your ultimate goal. If you see a key and want it, command get the key. If you later decide to leave it behind, command drop key. Many of your adventure's pitfalls can be overcome or avoided by examining different objects and places along the way. If you see a hole and wish to look into it, command look hole. A description of the hole will follow. When you first enter an area, a detailed description will appear on the screen. Afterward, only a brief description will be given. Whenever, a, whenever you want to see a detailed description again, command look. If your computer should ever question you, give it direct answers. A tree may need to be cut down. Command cut tree. The computer will ask with what? Answer with axe. Now that's a very important thing to know uh, because that definitely wasn't explicitly stated in Mystery House. And I didn't know how to command things like that, but I think I got away without using it. 
And then I had to work that out for Wizard and the Princess. Uh, because when asked with what, I would just answer axe. Because that, that's, you might say the axe. But conversationally, you wouldn't say, you wouldn't repeat with. So, okay. Sometimes there will be more description than there is room for text. If this is the case, the computer will print the first four lines of text and beep. Look forward to that. Press return for the remaining text. Should you ever desire to look into the past, you can review the previous 25 lines of commands and responses by pressing return without a command. Go back to the scene by pressing return again. To see a list of what you are carrying, type in for an inventory. During your journey, you will encounter terrain that you may call for flying, jumping, swimming, etc. In all cases, do not become frustrated. Instead, think of a way to explain to the computer what it is you desire, and it will do its best to comply. Above all, keep your commands simple. And this is this is really interesting because this was definitely wasn't in um, in either of the previous um, instruction manuals that we had. So map your progress. You will not be able to fulfill the prophecy gen without mapping your progress. Draw a map showing what different directions lead where. Objects taken and dropped, dangerous areas, anything and everything you see along the way. Take special care to map when you're in a maze, the bane of all adventurers. Mm -hmm. It may be cavern, a tunnel, or just a repeating visual. Keep track of your footsteps by dropping items along the way and backtracking to pick them up. So there, I, it might be because this is probably the first of these high-res adventures specifically targeted at a younger audience, so uh, an audience of children, where I think um, the others were probably just sort of for anybody out there who might be playing. Um, but this is being a lot more explicit in saying, or in offering ways that you can try and navigate these mazes, um, because we had a, a, like the full set of those as described there in Wizard and the Princess. Um, and it was only kind of through outside research that Afterwards, I came up with a way to um, uh, navigate some of them. Um, so it says, above all, try every different direction and map all of the different possibilities. If you miss or forget an area, you might miss an important clue or necessary tool. The road to the dark crystal is long and perilous, and along the way you'll meet many terrifying creatures, some indestructible, others not. Remember, the bravest of heroes know when to fight and when to cower in the face of superior strength. Now, Jen, make haste. Watch the sky. The suns are drawing ever closer together. You must hurry to fulfil the prophecy. Yeah, so that's that's our beginning uh, beginning uh, set of instructions, which, uh, yeah, I find a lot more helpful than, uh, than the previous ones. I'm just going to tinker with the sound levels a little bit here. So I think... Uh, that's good. Let me pop this back up to there. Well, actually, no, it would be more useful if it was there, wouldn't it? To take the edge off the beep, and then this slider can go to here. Yep, okay. Uh, once again, yeah, I've, I've given it a little, little fiddle around. Hopefully, it's quite well balanced against my voice, but do let me know. Um, that would be very helpful. Thank you. Well, that that did put a heavy emphasis on mapping, isn't it? So I wonder if that's something I will will ultimately have to do. Um, but let's let's just jump in because we've been we've been not on the air for a bit. So let's let me get in the right window, the right frame of mind, and let's let's begin our adventure. So let's have a look at this screen. Jen is in a beautiful mountain valley. The mystics have a special name for it: the Valley of the Stones. Now I. This is interesting. This is interesting to me because the previous games in the Hyrule series are from a first-person point of view, um, so you never see the character you're supposed to be playing. But I guess because this is um, an adaptation of uh, a story from another medium, um, they're doing things a little bit differently. Um, I was also curious to see what this. I mean. Uh, I haven't said, but this is my first time playing this game, and all I've seen is this this opening screen so far. Um, I was also curious to see what the design would do about depicting the story, and whether it would, whether the story is going to mean the same thing, because a lot of the story of the Dark World is um, the experience of that world, as you see it in the film, 
Um, so it's about a, a living environment, um, an ecosystem that's kind of a, a total world. Um, and that's, that's a, a very important element of what's, what's happening there. But the Apple II is, is stark. It can be uh, graphically beautiful. I think this is graphically beautiful. Um, but it's going to be stark and simplified. And at this point, there's not a lot of animation going on, especially in these adventure games. So, yeah, I'm very curious as to what kind of mood it will evoke. I can turn my, uh, my own soundtrack up a little bit for me. So give it more atmosphere. There we go. Right, so what should I do, do you think? So, it's not really giving me a... Um, a particular hook of anything happening. Let's um, look at the valley. Oh, okay. Before Jane can act, oh, it was a, it was a trick, wasn't it? You cheeky game. Before Jane can act, a mystic approaches and says, "Ursu, wise of our race, is dying. He has sent for you. Come quickly." Then the mystic walks away. Okay. Can I follow the mystic? Which way did he go? I don't know. He just sort of phased in and out. Um, I guess that's <laughs> our first challenge. You know what? I think we might need that map, might we? Let me. I've got my. Um, you might remember if you've uh, if you tuned in for Wizard and the Princess. I've got my un untrustworthy uh, drawing tablet out again, um, which kind of cuts in and out, tends to cut in and out, um, so it can be useful for drawing with and can also be a distinct disadvantage. Um, certainly not doing great at the moment, so we're gonna I'm gonna mouse it. Apologies if it's a bit clicky sounding uh, while I quickly dash out this drawing. Let's just check what colour I'm on. Yeah. So um, yeah, so I've just got like a basic grid of uh, of rectangles here. We do the same kind of thing as I had. Oh, oh my mouse isn't uh, behaving itself very well either, which is interesting. Yeah, I'm going to draw some uh, basic renditions of what we see here uh, on the screen and make a few notes and things. Uh, usually it doesn't come out particularly well but then I am drawing it with a mouse and on a very small scale so I forgive myself that. You know what I think, uh, well so I haven't seen um, the the middle the middle bunch of Hyros Adventures, but the the crap the graphic the quality of the graphics here um, is way in advance of anything from Mystery House or Wisdom the Princess. Um, it's a um, for, it's paying really good attention to how it provides its graphic information, and it is. Um, is a very good rendition of the character designs actually from the film. They're very, very much recognisable. Um, okay, that'll do, I think. Um, yeah, I think it's going to tend to look a bit abstract, isn't it? I'm not sure how that looks on stream for you because it looks like it might be quite tiny and indecipherable. But let's um, let's head in the direction. Let's go north. Ooh, nice. Jen is trekking through the mountains. Below him he can see the Valley of the Stones. Interesting. Yeah, that's really beautiful. I love that artwork. It's um it's got a lot more abstract actually. Um which is probably necessary. Uh and is yeah, it's definitely a very different experience to the um, the imagery of the film, which is um, 
is very lush and detailed. This is almost, um, it's almost Art Deco, really. Oh, this drawing's going very badly. Never mind. It is only a, a, a map note, a note map. Um, so I think that wasn't right. I want to go valley. Can I go valley? Which direction does Jen wish to go? Okay, what if I go south? The mountains towering above the valley appear to go on forever. It seems futile for Jen to try climbing them. Okay, interesting. Uh, I'm gonna pinch a rectangle. This one? Can I pinch? No, oh, sorry, sorry, wrong. Uh, can I pinch this one? The um, I found found also in previous adventures that the cardinal directions don't always match up to um, to map in a grid. But I'll I'll try my best to make it work this way. I mean, there might well be a a better way of. Um, of mapping this out, but I um, I found this one works all right and has worked for me, so I'll I'll give it a go before um, trying to radically rethink it. I think I'm going to do Jen a disservice in uh, a great number of these uh, these sketches. Sorry, Jen. Right, that'll do. So I, th I think that was a no, wasn't it? Um, can I go down? Did I try that before? No. Um, well then, east. I think we've only got the... Oh, that doesn't look quite right. Jenna's standing on a mountainside covered with loose and extremely sharp shale. Again, another awesome uh, graphic. So um, I didn't I didn't mention, but yeah, this is the um, the seventh of the Hyres adventures and the last. I think they kind of used, interestingly enough. So this is also the first kind of licensed game that um, Sierra did. Interestingly enough, I think this um, format of adventure would be reused by them, but not under the description of a Hyres adventure. Uh, for some licensed games for Disney. They did like some Mickey Mouse and Winnie the Pooh games, which is um, an interesting thing. Um, I think more I think more notably they did the um, adventure game adaptation of um, The Black Cauldron, um, a Disney, Disney animation from the middle of the 80s, or was it the late 80s? I think it must have been the middle, must not it? Uh, Little Mermaid is the very end of the 80s, I believe. Um, yeah, they did the uh, adventure game adaptation of that um, in the same engine as uh, the first King's Quest, I believe. The AGI engine. Okay, so th I think we're going west. Let's hope we haven't missed the story by that point. Oh! Oh wow, look at that! 
dwells in the Valley of the Stones, so named for the circular formations of standing stones that lie within it. So this this comes out in 1983. And I believe the um, that the production of Dark Crystal was over 1981, and it uh, for some you know some legal post production reasons. Um, I think it wasn't released until 1982, um, but that's not what the the stones and the circles are in the film. So I wonder if um, the creators at Sierra had access to. Um, they probably didn't have access to the film, did they? They might just have interpreted the uh, some of the stills and um, scripts they were given for this. Um, because this is interesting and not not what's in the film. So yeah, that might be an interesting um, an interesting point of this game and that it might depart quite a lot from uh, from kind of the the essence of the dark crystal, um, while sticking to some of the layers of it. That's a I'm, that's a that's a beautiful image. So I don't know I don't know if I'm supposed to be, I'm supposed to be looking at things. Oh, I tell you what I should have been doing. Have a look at my inventory. Huh. Uh, in will do. Thanks. Jay's not carrying anything. Okay. Um, let's look at the stones, folks. Oh, look, sorry, I'm being too sophisticated. Look, stones. Genesis says that the shadows cast by the sending stones seem to point north into the hills toward a distant tree. Jen is in the valley of the stones. Is that where we need to go? Because that seems like a significant thing. Uh, but I don't know if it is. Right, this um, this is a really detailed image actually, so I'm just gonna, for the sake of brevity, uh, simplify it somewhat in my rendition here. Can you see that? You can't see that. Let's pop that on there. Um, Yeah, that kind of gives the idea, doesn't it? Well, let's go north then. Just making his way along a shadowy path that snakes through the hills above the Valley of the Stones. So that's, again, that's not where we need to go, is it? So... Fascinating, but we need to stay in the valley. So, do we keep going west? Jenna's in the valley of the stones, towering above him to the west is a steep cliff. A cave opening beckons from the side of the cliff. Interesting. I mean, I think so far these screens have kind of maintained um, uh, their orientation. In terms of the cardinal directions, um, so when we're looking uh, up, is the top of the screen is north and so on, which is uh, not always a given in these types of games. Oh, I seem to have lost a colour somehow. That's interesting. Not sure how I did that. Oh no, it's back. Fantastic. Okay. Um, it's definitely definitely an action pose from Jen there. I'll come now. 
Okay. Definitely something um, quite forlorn about this um, this landscape. Which is, um, I guess, is quite redolent of a um, of a world that is in danger of expiring. Um, so, uh, can I go cave without having to give a specific direction? Well, this is very dramatic. They're slowly walking within a dimly lit cave. The passage winds to the north and to the east. Um, and both are pictured there, sort of correctly. That's oh, this game is so beautiful. Um, I need to. I think I need to go back. So east should be back. Um, can I go north? Sheerclay St John's Way. No south. No, okay, so that's kind of a one-way street. That would seem to be a way out of the valley, I think. Probably our main way? I don't know. Not necessarily our main way out of the valley, but... Um... Oh, Jen shudders as a piercing chill grips him. At the same instant, he senses that he is too late and Ursu has died. Jen is in the Valley of the Stones. I think that means the game is over. Because Ursu hasn't given us our quest. Interesting. We can keep walking, I suppose, and see if we can find where we're supposed to go. Oh, wow, look close up. Just wandering around in the mountains. So that's not right either. Amazing. Um, okay. oh, oh dear, oh no, I've done terrible things um, by being in the wrong window. Uh, can I look at the valley? The Valley of the Stones is a beautiful and a peaceful haven. Um, can I look mystic? Okay, um, so you can go all directions from here. Go north to that tree again. In the hills. Um, what if I look at the tree? The tree is nice, but that is all. Can I climb the tree? Jen climbs the nearest tree, sees nothing special, then returns to the ground. Well, I appreciate them writing a description for that. Can I go north? Jen falls head over heels down a steep slope. Oh, wow. Jenna is traversing a wilderness of tangled vines, chattering blossoms, and wary creatures. Oh. Look, creature. Jenna lets as many new and unusual creatures. Um, so I suspect I probably. Yeah, I can't go back at that point. There's lots of points of no return here. So, where do we think we need to go to see. Our master Ursu then. Um, if this is the same as previous games, I can restart. No, restart game. Oh, restore. When they have all would Jen want to do such a thing? Interesting. So, uh, Manu, you didn't tell me about how to save the game. Which is interesting. Because load restore game. Ah, okay. So you can do it. Restore game. 
Um, I, but I don't want to do that. Hmm. I wish to start the game again, please. Uh, bear with me a second, folks. I'm going to pop it. Let's pop this on again. We'll try again. Anyway, let me check in with you. How are you all doing? I hope you're well today. Um, I am intrigued by this adventure. Um, I'm not sure what it's. I think it's going to be. It's going to be equally as tricky as the other ones, isn't it? But I'm not quite sure what it was asking for. So let's uh, check the inventory, and then the mystic should pop up. I love how simply they've um, captured the essence of the mystic. Before Jen can act, the mystic approaches and says, Ursu, wisest of our race, is dying. He is sent for you. Come quickly. Then the mystic walks away. And then, if you're clever enough to ask Jen to follow the mystic, <laughs> it asks us which way he went. So let's try, let's try something we've tried before. Just trek through the mountains. Below him, he can see the valley of the stones. So, can we. What if we look for valley? Valley of the stones is a beautiful and peaceful haven. Can we keep going north? Jen falls head over heels down a steep slope. Oh wow! Jen is making a way, his way through a dense wilderness with chattering flowers, tangled vines, and creatures peeking from everywhere. Okay, so you end up in another locale. That's interesting. Can I pet a creature? Why in the name of Walker would Jen want to do such a thing? Can I look tree? No. Alright, I want to restart the game. Oh. I'm sure there was a a command for restarting the game. Oh well, we'll do it manually. Apologies for the beep. Hmm, this is an interesting game of trial and error, isn't it? Look at the valley this time, or attempt to. Okay, let's do walks away. And then we go. So, can we go north and then east? We can. Jed is lost in the mountains that rise high above the valley of the stones. Okay. Hmm. Uh, let's uh, record that one. So, given that there seem to be lots of ways to exit the valley, I wonder if there are a limited number of useful options because that would also prove interesting for future future parts of this playthrough. Um, again another another very beautiful use of colour and line here. Um, really making use of The, um, the limited palette. Um, I really like what we've seen so far 
uh, of the game using the um, limiting uh, the orange, blue, uh, black and white for this mountain section. And then when we get into the more exotic wildernesses that we drop into, um, splashing into the, um, the greens and the purples as well. That's a very, uh, very good design decision, I think. Okay, so I think this is a dead end if we're lost. I don't know if you can see that I've written lost. Just to let me know that's that's why I am. Um, so if we go back west, we should hopefully get unlost. And then can we go west from there? Oh, that's the tree. Well, you know what, that maps perfectly to a grid, so I'm not unhappy about that. Oh no, oh no, don't move that, please. Oh no, oh, 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 uh, no, uh, okay, that'll do, thanks. Um, Okay, so I'll just so the, I think the tree also is not somewhere we need to go, and we know we've got a limited number of moves to get to uh, where Ursu is, which doesn't seem to be particularly intuitive, even though this is our has been our home since early childhood. So uh, I guess that's always the. Um, the tension, isn't it? That the in these um, uh, these kinds of adventure games, you don't really act as the protagonist of them. You just act for the protagonist, um, which in many cases leads to uh, inferior results. But that's part of the. The part of the interesting tension about these these things is that you're getting into the headspace of uh, of other people, uh, usually the designer, because they've made some idiosyncratic choices about how to proceed in the game. That'll do. That looks like a tree. Um, so if I get the purple back, and if I go west, I end up there. And if I come from below, uh, that's where I thought also. Can I go west from here? No, I can't. Okay, well that's kind of limiting the options, isn't it? I wonder if I do need to go through the dark cave. Um, I'm going to check out this, um, what lies south of here again. Just wandering around in the mountains. Um, I love that for each of the kind of, you're just walking in the mountains kind of deals. We, um, yeah. uh, we do get a different screen, a you know, different graphic, which is very nice. They're all kind of at different um, different angles and different closeness to uh, to Jen as well. Yeah, it's kind of like we're guiding him through the story, isn't it? Rather than um, being being the character in the story. Sorry, Jeff, I've done you no favours in this drawing. Now, what is nice, and I hadn't thought about it until just this moment, 
is that um, Mystery House and uh, Wizard and the Princess were distinctly lacking in, uh, in people. Lots of environments and some objects, but very few people appeared, and there was no kind of interaction between people. But the ability, even just to see um, Jen on each screen, um, makes it feel a lot more uh, personal, a lot more personalised. I really like that. You can go south. The rest of the south seem to go on forever. Ah, okay. Yeah, so that's. I think I think we do have to go through the tunnel in the mountains. Although that looked like that was a way out. That's not actually the way out. Probably. So hang on. I know there's a. You can't go. Let me do my uh, X's as well to mark where I can't go. So I can't go these ways. Yeah, so I think it's, with a little bit of experimentation, it's funneling us in these directions. Where was the place where we fell off into the other part of the landscape? Was it to the south of this one? It must be, must not it? So, you know, I'm going to put an arrow here so that I can go that way, because I know that. Alright, let's go for this uh, tunnel. So we're going uh, west again. If we just say west from. Oh, excuse, yep, excuse me. If we go west, is that into the. Yeah, it's into the cave. Cool. Um, let's go to the north. Ah, we found him. Jen is in a large candlelit cavern. Ursu, wisest of the mystics, lies here dying. Beside him on the floor is a bowl of liquid. Listen, Ursu. Do you notice there's nothing unusual? Talk, Ursu. Whoa, Ursu sighs and says, At the time of the last conjunction, or coming together of our world's three sons, the evil Skeksis gained control of the great crystal that rules our destiny. The crystal cracked and darkened, and dark it will remain until a piece of that that broke off the crystal shard is restored. There is a prophecy that the shard can be replaced only by Gelfling Hand, and only at the time of the next great conjunction. If this prophecy is not fulfilled, the Skeksis will grow even more powerful, and their reign will last forever. Jen, to you has fallen the task of healing the crystal, and it is time for your quest to begin, for very soon the three sons will once again be joined in a great conjunction. You must find Augra, keeper of secrets and watcher of the heavens. She may have the shard you seek. Gelfling, I leave you with this final puzzle. What do the Sun Brothers quarrel about? Find the answer to this mystery and present it to Augra. Okay. Uh, let's make a note of this. Um, I might do that on here actually. Um, so it's what do the Sun Brothers quarrel about? I suppose my pen decided it wasn't start working. No. 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 Yes. No. 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 Okay. Apologies for that little diversion there. What do you. And the frequent clicking.
What do the Sun Brothers quarrel about? Find the answer to this mystery and present it to Augra. Only then can you gain entrance to her observatory. And now, Gelfling, our roads must curve apart. We may meet in another life, but not again in this one. With these words, Ursu dies, and his lifeless body vanishes from the sleep brain. Jen is in a large cavern. Look, water. Look, candle. Get a candle. It would be sacrilege for Jen to take that which belongs here. Get water. Okay. Um, in that case, gonna gonna leave. Gonna go south. Gonna go west. Oh, sorry, I meant east. We're gonna go east again. So we know we can go north. What was the other direction we could go? Then should I save? Should I save? I... So, in relation to inventory, we haven't really seen sort of objects littered around. Normally they draw in separately after the main image. At least that's how the previous games worked. So you'd kind of tell that there was something extra there. But, um... It doesn't seem to be the case so far. Which is interesting. I don't know how important inventory will be to this game. Uh, we know we've got to solve a riddle, so that's cool. Um, uh, so where was... let me find where the other place was. I will work out how to save first. I need to change my discs that I've got the save game in. And then if I try and save the game... Game can only be saved on a disc initialized by the Dark Crystal game. Continue. Yes. Enter a letter from Ato under which you wish to save the game. Let's give it A because this is the start of the game. You can set the save game disc and press return. Yep, I've got it in the right slot. So disc one, side B, and press return. Okay, so if I do that. Okay, I should have saved. So let's, let me just remind myself where the other location was that we can fall into a new part of the world. So we go east again to where we started off, and then south to where we are here. Oh, it's in futile from here. Okay, can you go east? Oh, you can. Interesting. This is different again, isn't it? Joe's lost in the mountains that surround the Valley of the Stones. Okay, so that's another lost one. So you can't go south. Let's mark that off. And you can go east, but that's also lost. I uh, give you another um, opportunity to get dead ended. Which um, is okay. It's um, it certainly gives the impression that you're not exactly, not precisely in a hostile environment, but not exactly in a uh, in one tailor made to your your needs. Um, so that that fits, I think, with what. What this, uh, what this story is probably doing. I kind of like these little thumbnails I'm making just as, um, as kind of abstract pieces of art, really. It's quite a nice thing to do. Um, I don't know if we talked much about it in previous streams, but, but mapping, which is not really something that you do in modern video gaming, is um, 
it's quite a nice thing really if you just want to chill out and concentrate on something um, and you, you're happy to be kind of slow and methodical about things um, mapping's quite a nice activity oh, so if you go north you get to this one it's an extremely sharp Shale, sharp shale, extremely sharp shale. Which is quite fun to say. Um, can I get some shale? Okay. Okay, got shale. Um, can I continue to go east? We shall prevent you from getting a good foothold. You can't climb any higher. Fair enough. Um, So now I'm wondering what on earth we're going to do with shale, but... Ah, okay, so we can kind of scrabble up this side of the map, um, get some shale, and then get lost. So what is it? A piece of shale is in our inventory. Okay, so where was that other place where we fell off into... Um, A new location then. But we definitely found two, didn't we? Oh, hang on. Was it just the screen next to the tree? I think it was, wasn't it? Ah, so if I go um, west here and go north, then we fall down the slope and we're in this screen. Gotcha. And then surely one screen to the um, the side should be. Wow. Look at this stuff. Oh, amazing. Oh, we have got a little creature poking out the the uh, tree or bank or whatever it is. So one screen different to this should be the one that we saw before with like, the bird thing in the tree. Yes, there we go. Great, okay, that, that clinches it, so I'm happy with that. Um, so I think this is, yeah, this is kind of the only place we can go. So that actually consoles me somewhat because I was afraid there'd be multiple directions we could potentially head in um, and have to commit to one and not be able to return. But this is all, all one thing. So that's good. Um, so I think... So from this one, if I go east, yeah, so this holds, no, so this is flipped from the other map because it would have to be west, but it's, yeah, the direction is flipped around. So I'm going to start a new, um, a new set of maps uh, from here. So let's do that quickly. Oh, I'll tell you what I can do is if I go that, hide that, open that, uh, get rid of that, and then do a new layer here. We're, we're good to go really, aren't we? So start at the bottom here. So yeah, sure, I'll start with this one and pop that in the middle. So this is um, some trees. Wrong colour, I wanted white, thank you. Some trees.
Okay. So for um yeah, any viewers out there um who I guess I don't I wouldn't like any spoilers per se, but if anyone has a kind of like they haven't seen this game before and they just have an idea of what of something that might be worth like investigating on the screen or anything, then do let me know. Um because it would be cool to try and work this thing out together. I'm assuming there's probably not too many of you of you out there who've um, who've played this before. Let's look at the trees. Nothing unusual. I'd say everything is. We we're at the nothing unusual prompt again as the default for things that I haven't made a response for. Um, look, creatures. Many new and un yeah. So that's appropriate. I look plants. No. Hmm. Smell the air. Doesn't know what I taste. Taste. Yuck. <laughs> what if I do just smell? Do you notice there's nothing unusual? Mm, you can't smell. Um, touch. Creature. In the name of Orga, would Jen want to do such a thing? Okay. So, east of here was. Was that the third one or.? No, so that's this one. So, let me pop that in. Um, of course, uh, not forgetting for an instant which is east and which is west. You know what I do? If I were to look at these. Uh, this map that I'm drawing in isolation later on. I'm not sure if I'd necessarily be able to make out what's what, but hopefully just in the context of this uh, this game with the with the game open at the same time, it will all make sense and jog memories. So there's this weird tubular plant. So I think it stops saying that you're surrounded by uh, new and interesting things after a bit and just says you're in the wilderness. Which is nice actually, I think the um, the first couple of games didn't really have that variable uh, descriptor where the f you get something different the first time you're in a place and then subsequently it um, sort of defaults to a reminder of where you are. So I look at plum, plum. If I smell, if I look at the creature, yeah, nice. Um, so back. Oh, how put the arrow in? Let's put the arrow in. No, it's east. Pay attention. We go, um, and then we'll go. I'm going west in this screen, aren't I? And I'll, I'll just map out this one as well. I think this is my favourite of the wilderness ones. Uh, really captures. Um, it's a really good angle and captures Jen's surprise. So I enjoy that a lot. And also um, love the very simple um, magenta and green scale. If I were a child in 1983 who'd seen and liked the film, I'd, I'd, 
quite really enjoying my experience with this so far. It's got um it's not the same atmosphere as the um the film, but it's got atmosphere. And so far it's it's pretty much been logical, um consistent and made sense. So yeah, uh, I'd I'd be a happy bunny. I mean, I'm a happy bunny now in twenty twenty two. If that really is the year. It kind of looks like Jen's been picked up in my uh, my rendition of this by a flying creature, but never mind. That's kind of alright, isn't it? So yeah, where where do we go from here? Plants. I smell. I look creature. Okay, what if I continue going west? Can't go in that direction. That's helpful to know. So I can do that there. Um, so let's go back down the. Oops. Let's go back down the line. Oh. Too many E's. Back down the line and. Can I go east from here? No, okay. So now the directions are kind of reversed, possibly. So I think in theory we should be able to go north from any of these places. Because that was the... No, south. We should be able to go south from any of these places. Oregon Slope is too steep for them to climb. Yeah, okay. So that's convenient because I can... Um, mark that off on here too uh, like this and like this just test it off on the um, westernmost westernmost of these things uh, but I think it'll be the same yeah same deal that's good to know as well uh, let's mark that off quick as you like um, and let's go north instead. Oh, apologies for that. You were in the wrong window sound. If you heard that. Oh, whoa, look at that guy. Jen is alone in the wilderness. Happily, there is a beautiful pond sparkling like a gem among the chattering flowers to brighten up Jen's loneliness. Croaking frog like creatures abound on huge lily pads floating on the pond. The, um, the writing is a lot more descriptive um, and it's giving a lot more I think um, I'm happy about that look how happy that little creature is oh it's adorable I love, I don't know if you um, you can see, but uh, whether it's intentional or not, um, because kind of um, you get a different sort of subsidiary colours from the overlapping of, uh, of coloured characters in the Apple II, but um, just under um, Jen's fringe or bangs, um, there's a little bit of blue uh, green colouring which just kind of shadows that area um, and gives some nice dimensionality to to his appearance. I really like that. Okay, well let's get, let's get the main guy on here. This is uh, so. I guess there's multiple creatures, isn't there? It says. Right, can I talk to the creature? This is the Dark Crystal, not Doctor Doolittle. 
very good. Very good, Roberta. Okay. Um. <laughs> okay. Um. Draw this arrow in. Oh, make sure you can see that. Okay. Um. Get water. So there's nothing that will hold water. That's a fair point. Uh, look. Lily pad. Uh, look. Plants. Look. Look. Pond. Gazing at the pond, Jen sees the reflecting of the three suns drawing ever closer in the sky. Hmm. Interesting reminder of the time in this. Um, can we go north? Is that a silly thing to. Oh, Jen is in a cool forest under a canopy of twisted trees. The air here is filled with an enticing scent. Ooh, interesting. Evocative. I do kind of wonder what's going to happen when... Um, if it follows the plot of the film, when we meet Kira, the other girlfriend character, because um, the two of them stay together for, for the rest of the story, really, apart from um, right at the end, or just before the end, I suppose. So I wonder how that is normally uh, in these type of adventure games, uh, the static screen ones. Um, you're not, you're not really more than one character, or um, in control of more than one character. Interesting. Well, I'm gonna go back south from there. Let's see where else I can go from the pond. Can I go further west? I'm thinking probably not. I can. Oh no, this looks not good. More wilderness. And the, the chattering of flowers and calling creatures is almost deafening. Interesting. What a fascinating game. This feels um, a lot more focused on environment than, um, than Mystery House or Wizard of the Princess. And the uh, experience of environment and the consistency of environment. Cool, so this was west. I'll, I'll knit back and see if I can go east as well. High frog like creature. Ooh. There's a babbling brook splashing through the wilderness here. Chattering flowers and tall grasses line its banks. I'd say um, what it also gives the game, uh, this kind of extra level of detail. I mean, it's, it's pretty basic detail uh, by literary standards, but 
uh, basic level of detail, sorry, advanced level of detail uh, by these games, some of these types of games. Um, is there's much more a sense of exploration, which I appreciate. Um, whereas before it was like, this is a desert, here is a snake that will, that will poison you. That kind of thing. But this is, uh, this feels a bit more experiential. Right, so if I go south from here, yeah, so that follows through. So it's kind of not, there's not really a um, any sense of impediment. Um, so if there's a brook there, you can just kind of cross it, or a pond, you can go around it, which I I like. Um, I'm not sure what that means for. Um, what I should be doing, really, in gameplay terms. The water sparkles magically in the triple sunlight as it flows over a stream, st stream bed strewn with pebbles. Ooh, can I get a pebble? Okay, cool. So you need to look at things in order to get items. Ooh! Jen has wandered into a virgin forest of gnarled trees and vine-like creepers. Interesting. Look at that image. It's fascinating. Reminds me of um, oh, one of the Beatles album covers. Which one is it? Is it Revolver? The one where they're kind of in, rendered in line drawings. It might be the mop top as well that, uh, that's uh, evoking that for me. So I feel like uh, gnarled trees and vine like creepers signals uh, some kind of danger. So I, uh, I'm not wary of that. Let's look at these trees. Before the darkening, before the darkening, the trees of this great forest grew straight and tall. Oh, the darkening of the land! Now they are twisted and deformed. Mm. Look at the creepers. The, there are vines hanging everywhere. Interesting. So if I go west from here, do I get to the place where it smells? Yes, I do. Well, it doesn't tell me it smells, so that's fine. So to kind of round out this section of the map, I'm going to try going east. There's a sling lying here amongst the trees. Ooh. Well, it's our first sort of um, nominated item, which is interesting. I mean, I've got a pebble and a sling, so I feel like that's probably a combination that could uh, could solve a problem. Kind of a use sling with what with pebble kind of arrangement, or put sling. No, you can't. I can't. I can't do. Can't conjoin anything. It might have to be something like that. Given that there's no 
movement, uh, graphical movement in this game, sort of things are either there or they're not. Um, the fact that Jen is rendered in each screen and we get to see him from lots of different angles kind of gives us a composite sense of his um, his demeanor and his uh, his dimensionality, which is um, more motive than you would get otherwise, I think. Wrong color. So that's east and then west we could go to the other one. Interesting, well I'm gonna get the sleigh, if I may. Excellent. You know what we should probably do is have a look at our inventory items because sometimes that helps. Oh, that's not very good writing a sling there. Uh, let's look at the sling. The sling, a weapon for hurling small rocks, appears to have been made by Gelfling Hand. Now that's an interesting little bit of story because it's not it's not gems, is it? Um, look, pebble. Pebbles are oh. Pebbles are round and smooth. To his horror, Jen sees a crystal bat hovering overhead. His crystal eye staring directly at him. Um, use sling with pebble. Oh. Um, sling bat. Jen does not seem to have it. I see what you mean. Uh, okay, interesting. So that that might be something we wanted to avoid, but hmm, interesting. Sort of timed events, not unfamiliar from these games. Um, but I think they carry well to me. They carry a different weight here anyway. Let's try south if we can go that way. Ooh. Creatures scurry out of Jen's way as he walks through a wilderness of thick foliage and chattering flowers. So the interesting. I wonder if I can go any further um, east on this side. I guess that's something we can test out, isn't it? Oh, amazingly! Look at the time. It's uh, like an hour and a half in already. Um, this has flown by for me. Um, I've been quite engrossed. It's kind of nice to be um, so in the absence of uh, of gameplay that really requires uh, my hands to be on the controls uh, for for much of the time. It's kind of nice to have the drawing of a map as a uh, as a component of of playing this game. I um, I enjoy that. Um, it's certainly uh, quite engrossing, and, um, and yeah, the time has just flown by. So I feel like um, I'm ready to have a break for a minute from the drawing and uh, stretch my legs as well. So I'm just going to pop, pop away for a minute. Um, and then we'll be back uh, for another half an hour, and then I think it'll be time to, to stop streaming, I think. Um, I'll leave you with uh, with everything as it is here. I'll just pop a little be right back in the chat for anybody who wanders past. I guess I can pop the loading screen on as well. I'll be back in a moment, folks. Oh, 
Okay, I'm back. Let's get the... There's the game. Okay, let's see if we can get a closer look at these flowers. There are many strange flowers all bobbing and weaving their heads. Hmm, Jen hears a fearful clattering sound. Before him oh, looms a Gartham, one of the menacing beetle like warriors who served the Skeksis into command. That's awesome. Look at that. Um, and run, run. Too late, a powerful claw flashes out, and Jen is in the clutches of the dreaded Gartham and captured the Gelfing, the last hope. For the fulfilment of the prophecy dies, the crystal, unhealed, remains darkened, and at the hour of the great conjunction of the three suns, the rule of the evil Skeksis is re reconfirmed forever. Would you like to play again? If I say, what if I say no? Thanks for playing the Dark Crystal. Uh, can I restore a game? No, you're going to leave me hanging. Fair enough. Um, right, in that case, we're going to need to do a little bit of jiggery pokery then, aren't we? And, and boot up again. So that's interesting. Apologies for the beep, everyone. Well, that was a good way to come back to the game, wasn't it? When, um... <laughs> just before you're captured. So I think we need to get rid of that crystal bat, don't we? I think that might have triggered the Gartham encounter after perhaps a certain number of turns um, because it kind of I, I felt like that was like a, an event screen rather than a location screen that we we got there which is also lovely I'm so far I'm really enamored by this um, I did think it might be something special um, because uh, uh, from what little I know of it, it did seem to be quite different to the other Sierra adventure games um, of the era. Um, and yeah, so far it's proving to be um, very interesting. Okay, so I'm going to restore a game, but I will also need the save game disk in the drive. Uh, so if I Door game that works right. Yeah. Um, a. And then. Cool. So at this point, we don't have shale. I don't think. No. Um, but we have been to see uh, soup, I believe. So we'll go. I think I can get shower just by going west from here. Sorry, I meant east from here. All right. Well, I think for the last little bit of the stream, what we'll do is continue mapping out the wilderness area if we can, and maybe we can work out how to use a sling. I don't want to do anything. I want to do um, get shale. Get shale. Look, shale. The shale is very sharp. Ooh, interesting. Hmm. Um, so from here, was it north? Oh, excuse me, wrong window again. We go north from here. Oh yeah, and you end up in the. I think where you go north from here. Okay, cool. So we're back in the right area. Um, we're here. I'm going to want to go to the stream. I think. So if I go north, I wonder if the crystal bat. The crystal bat seemed to work very graphically very well in the screen in which it appeared where the sling is um, so I wonder if it appears only in that location or if it appears after a certain number of turns maybe
I will go. Let, well, let's test things out a little bit. Let's go west to get to the stream and get the pebble. Um, I'm assuming you probably can just get pebble without looking at the description. If you know it's there, yeah, you can. So I, I wonder if I missed a trick with the, um, the sling thing. I wonder if I need to go two levels deep with the um, use something with something with something. So if it was like use sling with pebble with bat or something might have might have worked. So I want to go back. Now I've got it. I want to go back east to see if we can go further east from here. So, okay, so we can't. So that was kind of a, um, a dead end as far as that's concerned. If we go. Okay, so north from there is where the sling is. Um, should I save? Yeah, let's save the game. Jolly well, why not? Let's save the game. And I want to continue. Um, we'll make this B, and I'll swap my disk around. I'm glad that the um, the save game instructions are nice and clear. I appreciate that. Okay, so I'm going north. I'm gonna get the sling. Let's see if that triggers the. Um, the bat counter. Not straight away, and then I want to go uh, east if I can. Can't go. Okay, that's fine. Okay, well, can I go north? Oh, I can. Okay. Ooh. Jin is wandering through a primeval forest. Strange creatures peer down at him from their perches. Jen notes his main new and unusual creatures. Uh, what if I look at the forest? Before the darkening, the trees of this great forest ah, grew straight and tall, so similar to what we'd heard before. Uh, now they are twisted and deformed. Interesting. Okay, let's get another rectangle up. Put that in here. Can I go east from here? No. Okay, that's good to know. So that's definitely a hard limit on that side of the map. So that's good. Can I go? I guess I. I guess I'd better go um, west to fill in that part as well. Oh, what's this? Jonas wanders into the ruins of what appears to have been a Gelfling village. He's standing in front of a large wall. Nearby are two flat stones. Interesting.
Yeah, so one thing the um the film does um uh, is uh alternate between what's happening on with what's happening with the um the mystic characters and Jen and Kira um, on one side, and what's happening with the Skeksis in the castle on the other. But I guess we're not going to get the Skeksis side of things, so I kind of wonder how we're going to find out about like the excommunication of the Chamberlain, things like that. Hmm. Um, look at the stones. Stones are large, flat, and smooth. Um, look at the wall. Huh. Touch wall? Fitting with the wall has no noticeable effect. Touch stones? Why in the name of Augur would Jen want to do such a thing? The thought has just occurred to me as well. So, Jan in the film has a, a little set of pipes that he plays, and that turns out to be uh, a crucial way of finding out about something um, at a juncture in the film. Uh, there don't seem to be any. He didn't have anything on him at the beginning of the adventure in this game, and I haven't seen any indication of any pipes anywhere. So I I, I guess we can bypass that particular. Um, I guess as it's a, it was kind of a sound based um, problem for um, Jen to solve in the film, and as there's not a significant sound components in this game perhaps that's why that's not that's not part of it and um, the riddle perhaps is is all we need to do to um, get the same kind of result so if we go let's just let's just test it out if we go south yeah that's where I thought we'd get to so that makes sense Good, like it. Um, let's go back north again. So I, I don't know if we can interact with this um, this area or not. Let's go west again. Ah, oh, that's delightful. Jen is in a thickly wooded forest where vine like creepers hang everywhere from the branches of ancient trees. Okay. Can I get some creeper? This is the Dark Crystal, not Tarzan! Oh. Roberta, you're getting me. You're doing variations on a joke. You keep getting me. This is. Um... So much more delightful a start than uh, than either Mystery House or uh, or Wizard the Princess. Oh, remember if you so if you were with me for that. Remember we'd spend at least a good couple of streams just wandering around looking under stones at the beginning of Wizard the Princess. And look at all the places we've been to and explored in the course of one stream today. How much better is that?
So presumably if we went south from here you'd get to the place where there's a smell? Hmm, the air here is filled with an enticing scent. What if I smell? Then this is nothing unusual. Apart from enticing scent. Well, clearly. Okay, so that all matches up nicely as well. I'm enjoying the neatness of these maps. They are very appealing to me. Um, I should be able to go west, I think, if things are holding true. You can't. Oh, interesting. So the only place we've been able to go further west on this grid, uh, if you can see here, is uh, the place where the sound was deafening. Which, um, it might, that might be the way of progress, actually. Unless there's anything further north, of course. <gasps> Whoa, please insert disc two side A and press return. Holy moly, we've gone, we've swapped disc already. Which is interesting. I wonder why. Jen is in the arid brush land. There are scrubby bushes and crooked little trees everywhere. So I feel like this is probably a different area and we shouldn't head here yet. Although I don't know for certain. I kind of wonder about the scale of this game because it's um, potentially is twice the size of Wizard and the Princess, which was a one disc game. But by that token, Hold on a second, I've got to do a little bit of jiggly poker here. Um, by that token, um, we've got to a second disc very quickly in the process. Which, um. Oh no! Oh no! I, I do apologise about that. Uh, that was not supposed to happen. I'm trying to use my pen again, and it's, uh. Oh! That'll do hasn't gone particularly well but that said I can now do what I want to do which is give myself a bit more drawing room and then oh, uh, can I no no okay that's fine Hello, come on. We're getting there. Hey, that'll do. I'll take it. Cool, so... I'm going to try heading back east, um, this could be a disc swap needed, but luckily that's pretty easy to achieve. So let's find out about north then a bit, a bit more. Oh, that side, oh wow, um, that's interesting. That's. So I feel like there has, haven't been that many screens on disc one, side B. We haven't even looked at side A yet. Hmm. Interesting. I think, if I remember correctly, um, Wisdom of the Princess was just a single-sided disc as well. I'm curious. Jenna's on the hill of the Landstriders. Two long lived beasts are grazing here. Amazing. So, those guys don't come along until a lot later in the film storyline. Um, and Kira is kind of the one who can help us with those in, in that version of the story. Hmm. 
Fascinating. I guess I could look ruins. Kobe ruins are thousands of years old. Can I search the ruins? I don't think I'd be able to, but no. Same as look. That's fine. Oh, hang on. Hang on. Uh, I'll try and type north. That's what I'm So this goes across the other part of the discs too. Ooh, what is this? Just trolling the forest of towering trees, birds are singing and a creature stares at him from behind a large moss covered rock. Interesting. Look at the creature. Oh, that is not a useful creature. The creature glows back at Jim. He appears to be very, very hungry. Oh, uh, talk creature. Oh, it's not top to do little. I think I'm gonna have to go south. Okay, hungry creature. Appears to be a, a variety of uh, dangling threads uh, in these locations. So I wonder what happens if we go north from here, if we can. The potlings. She enters entered the village of the Yeah, so in in the manual in the game they called the pod people. So I don't know if that was like from an early draft of the script or somebody's got confused with invasion of the body snatchers, but that's that's what they're called in this um in this game. Uh village of the pod people, gentle peasants whose lives are devoted mainly to food, laughter and song. Talk people? The villagers tell Jen that the phrase pod people is a mystic rendering of a poppy a poipidia poppidia poppy pole, the name they use among themselves. Uh, <laughs> roughly translated, it means master gardeners who live in bulging plants. Jen is in the pod village. Oh, that's awesome. So there's like key locations that from across the story condensed in a fairly small space, which is intriguing. Okay, uh, I'm going back to disc 1B uh, to check out what happens if I go to the noisy room. So I'm going to make some notes at the top of this here, just in text for now, uh, because I think we'll leave those avenues to explore next time we play. Um, so I'm going to pop here, this is Podlings. Looks a bit like Podlings, but never mind. This is Hungry Creature. Um, I couldn't quite tell if the Hungry Creature was on screen or not. I think it might have been, it's kind of around that arch shape. So interestingly, we haven't encountered the um, the crystal bat this time. So I wonder, wonder if there's a specific trigger or whether that's just a random event that could happen at certain points. Uh, this was the land striders. The, uh, the route west from there seemed like a neutral kind of territory. Um, so, uh, explore that another time maybe. Well, let's go. So, we're back here, aren't we? Let's go west to the village, west to the trees, south to this general area. 
south to the oops oh no oh no uh south to the pond interesting I'm gonna look at the pond interesting I'm gonna go west More wilderness. The chattering of flowers and calling creatures is almost deafening. So, can I listen? Creatures. <laughs> Nothing unusual. Uh, listen, plants. Okay, can I go north? No, can I go south? Can I go west? Oh, it's a dead end. Interesting. I mean, uh, contextually, that makes sense because that's kind of a um, a place that's hard to go, and that kind of makes it clear that it's not really a puzzle to solve. I don't think it's just an environmental feature. All right, so there are four. We know there are four directions that we can go from this point. Fab. I think that's a, a great place to leave it for today. What's our favourite screen to leave it on, do you think? I think, uh, oh, oh no, I've done it again. This one. There you go, that was a good one. That was a particularly good one. Lovely. Let's leave it there. Um, am I going to save it? I'll probably save it. As B again? Yeah, why not? So we'll just save. I do, I'm happy with that. Let's do a swap here. I want it to be a B. I've got Sega Disk in the drive. And then I want to swap back to that one and then press return. Fab. Brilliant. Well that's this is uh, absolutely flown by and I've had I've had a great time. Thank you very much for anybody who's joined me. Um, let's just have a quick run through if there's anybody in chat. Uh, Alice Hydra is still there. Hello. Uh, thank you for joining me. Uh, no worries if you're bot. Completely understand. Um, yeah, thank you very much for watching, everybody. Um, currently, at any rate, I'll be streaming this time uh, every Tuesday, and I intend to carry on playing more of the Dark Crystal. So um, please do join me for that if you'd, you'd like to see further adventures of Jen and see where else we can go in this um, surprisingly chill, um, atmospheric, and meditative game right that's what how i would characterize it i think um yeah this has been a really fun stream if you'd like to check out the um the vods of the previous streams we did for um other sierra high res adventures mystery house or wisdom the princess they're on my youtube channel cat sequences there's a link from my bio here on twitch um, you can subscribe to me there to get more videos. There's lots of other things going on there. I'm playing through uh, Dune, the um, the cryo game. I'm playing through Divine Divinity at the moment, um, and it's been a little bit delayed between episodes. But more of Portal, the 1986 Portal, will be going up there too. Um, so you can uh, subscribe to follow along there, get notified of when new videos go up. Um, please do follow me on Twitch if you'd like more of this and you can be notified of, of when I'm playing Dark Crystal again. Um, and yeah, that, that's it I think for now. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, take care. Goodbye.